Welcome back to Nicolaitis Comic Corner Class XS Known Classic. This episode number four fifteen hundred and thirty. No, fifteen thirty. It's fifteen forty one, excuse me, and double shot number fourteen thirty five. Uh before I continue, you may be noticing wearing a different shirt than usual. Say the Daleks. Yeah, I haven't worn a shirt in some time and I'm surprised it still fits me. Yep, it's an old shirt I've got. For, it's the other. I, I got rid of a lot of my t. <clears throat> I got rid of a lot of my t-shirts recently because I had way too many t-shirts. So I kept this one because this is my only Doctor Who shirt I own. No, seriously, it's it's the only one I I actually can wear. Uh, the other one I can't wear because it's a bit too tight on me. All right, moving on from that, talk about first Grey Lantern New Guardians Volume Four. Gods and Monsters. We have a brand new writer, Justin Jordan, who does the last 20 issues of this series. Now, why the heck did all the Green Lantern book to change side to change creative teams after 20 issues? Honestly, I don't know what was the reason for this at all. Excuse me. But they did it right after the Wrath of First Lantern crossover. Everybody who worked on those books all left. And they switched over these other writers. This one's done by Justin Jordan. Um, aside from this book, I'm not that all familiar with this writer. Though he did write this whole book, and mostly this is about Kai Rayner. Yes. Now this book basically does contain issues 21, 27, and Grand Lantern number 2. I'm not going to discuss Grand Lantern number 2 because, well, that's part of the Godhead, that's part of the, not Godhead, the Lights Out crossover in issue 25. 24 actually yes the first three issues is kind of in a way a prelude to lights out where it's mostly put Kyle Rayner having an encounter with Relic before the Green Lantern Corps does and him explaining some stuff and showing how freaking big he is despite the fact that yes Relic did make his first appearance in the pages of Green Lantern he was technically the first Lantern who count he was one of the early people who counts him yes Yeah, the first three issues mostly put what it is. It's just purely a lot set up for Lights Out. That's really what the first three issues are. It's basically Kyle and Hal team up for some issues. And we have Carol who basically helps Kyle move out of his apartment. We have Kyle team up with, I think, Ganthet. And about some aliens. Him as the white. Of course, he's a white lance. And then he just randomly runs into... Relic. Well, you could kind of say this is an early chronological appearance of Relic. Because we have this thing that's basically in space. And then here's Relic. Yes, you can kind of say this is an early chronological appearance of Relic. And this sketch cover looks like the actual one, one of the interior images of the Relic one shot from that was published in. Um, Lights out. Yes, I'm not really sure why that was the interior, but that's basically what it is. Yeah, this whole three-parter is simply put like we have Relic basically showing up, and he apparently is a big threat. And apparently, like, because apparently him being around, like apparently, and he's kidnapped Kyle Rayner because he wants to the light spectrum. He apparently thinks that. There's also this blinking thing going on with the with the lanterns that apparently Van Diddy decided to start. I didn't get a chance to ask him what was the purpose of that. Where, like, people are trying to make constructs and like a little bit light masters. I'm like, what the heck? Yep, and we have basically where the we have relic just take out the blue lanterns just prior to the events of Lights Out. Where he takes on the blue lanterns and the blue lanterns lose. They, they don't die at this point, but they die later on. Don't worry about that. And well, the whole thing of the white lantern stuff, and then of course came the Godhead. The whole thing with the finale for where we for this whole finale, which is really like it's a good finale. I do appreciate it. 
But Lights Out was simply a point where a lot of people basically were like kind of turned off from the Lantern Bucks because, oh, they can't use Lantern Rings because of this stupid thing. That Kyle who had been trapped in the source had been freed. And that kind of set up for something to basically go on to the next story arc. Where Kyle was alive and... He ran out with Carol. Yeah, here's the thing about Carol and Kyle. Yeah, apparently this has kind of started because of Justin Jordan. That Kyle and Carol decided to become a couple. Yeah, I don't really know what was the purpose of this. Despite the fact Jeff Johns really wanted to see Carol hook up with Hal Jordan. No, someone thought about it for Kyle to hook up with Carol for some reason. I do not know what was the reason for this. Yeah. And, well, the last few issues is simply them taking on some alien threat again. Battling some aliens. Not really a lot of stuff happening in these last two issues. Not really, no. Yeah, just basically a bunch of random alien stuff. I mean, it's not as interesting as basically what Tony Bedard was doing. Nothing against Justin Jordan. Uh, Justin Jordan, but it's just not that interesting. Uh, it's okay, it's pretty interesting now. The first few issues, the stuff that, that led into the, the stuff of Lights Out, that was good. It's stuff that came afterwards that was just okay at best. I'm going to give the trade a... I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. It was pretty good at the start, but it really slumped out. But All right. Now we got the first of three trades, so I've already discussed the third trade already. But two trades left for... This guy is for this series. We have... Red Lanterns, Volume 1, Blood and Rage. Written by Peter Mulligan. Art by Ed Baines. And, yes, the Red Lanterns have got an ongoing series. This was published back in 2011. And who would have thunk Red Lanterns would get an ongoing series? And it lasts as long as 40 issues. Yep. Now, Peter Mulligan was the original writer for the series, first 20 issues, and the rest of it was written by Charles Shaw, who did a really good job with the book. I will discuss those issues in the future. Now, in the case of these issues here, mostly put for these first seven issues of the series, which is focused on Atrocitus and Bleas, and we also have the debut of a new, I think his name was Reiner. We see him, basically, him, him, you see his first appearance, and he's supposed to be, be bullied, and then he becomes a Red Lantern, kills him, and goes off to space, gets some flame in his hair. Bleeds basically is basically speaking gibberish at the start. And this kind of started the thing for Red Lanterns because, because Atrocity was the only sane lantern where they had to basically spill some blood on what remains of Atrocity's own planet and throw the lantern in there and they come out and they speak perfectly fine. Bleeds had to go to the process twice. Because after a certain point in time, she went, she somehow reverted back to her old ways. And here's the thing. They actually explain Blaze's backstory in here. Where she was a princess on a world where a lot of people grew wings. Until the events of the Sinestro Corps War. This actually is partially connected to the original pre-flashlight version of her. Where they showed up and they killed her mother and they raped her. Yep, they raped her. Yeah, she got raped by a yellow lantern. What happened is the old lantern? As far as I know, he's never been really been brought up in current comics. Yep. Oh yeah, we also this funny thing with, with Atrocis where he's asking, What are you doing to my cat? This is of course Dax Star. Yes, a Earth cat who was a lantern. And his ring is on his tail, which I thought was so I think is so funny by him. Yep. But this trade is fantastic. It, it, it's a great start to this particular series. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And like usual because Belize is hot. Because like the artist knows how beautiful Belize is. That we have to show off her rear end as much as possible. Oh shoot. That's not what I wanted there. Yeah. I mean, so blah, but look. Here's her butt. Yep. Lots and lots of appearances of her butt. And look, another page. Her rear end. Yeah, her rear end pops up a lot in here. Yes, this book here, like, is even a flashback when it happened with Atrocity, but when the 
Manhunt just basically destroyed his home world because of the way they were. Also, uh, Kuratoa, who was one of the Guardians who got killed, Atras has kept his body, and then he, I think it was like half of the storyline, the body disappears. And later on, he's actually able to be alive. He, of course, first accuses Belize of moving the body, even though Belize would probably not do that because Kur Kurotoa is the source of his rage. Why would she be the source of his rage for? I have no idea. Ed Baines basically shows up every time. <laughs> every time that Belize shows up, make her as hot as possible. Mm-hmm. Yes, make her as beautiful as possible. Yep. But yeah, this is actually just really good. Yeah, the whole thing about the series with characters being dubbed in blood, that's the thing with Red Lanterns, their obsession with it. And look, another butt shot for Belize. Yep. And there's also a mention about her fact having no wings. And, well, there's a flashback when she was younger, like, oh my gosh, like, wow, even before she became, well, Belize the alien, like, wow, she is hot, oh my gosh, she is so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, well, they arrive at the family tomb, it's like, way here, it's like, and then basically, like, the way here, like, why are you waiting, tell me way here. Because he, he she because he, she she knows how he appreciates the importance of that dead isn't your entire existence built on the veneration of your own long dead forebears. He's like, just be quick. And he goes in she goes in and that actually is possibly her mother. Like Lady Bluffs, grandchild of Prince of Faithful Wife of Larigo slain by a dog from the Snatcher Corps. This is your daughter, Belize. And she spits in the body. You old fool. This is your constant efforts to get me married off. That led me to all my fortunes. Alright, I'm done here. And Charles is like, what the heck did you do that for? Why'd you spit in the body for? He has this reaction of like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, like, look at that reaction of his. He's like, uh, why'd you do that? Why'd you desecrate the dead? Probably because she felt like it. <laughs> and of course she kills some people there. And of course Atrocis kills some people. And more butt shots of her. Yep. And more butt shots. And we have Atrocis basically petting Daxter. Which I think is so hilarious. Yeah, petting Daxter. And look, another butt shot. Yes, Ed Baines has got an obsession with Bleed's butt. Yes. And we have one member of the Red Lantern gets bitten by Atrostis. Well, they take memories. Mm hmm. Yep, I see this like weird creature who's a member of the Red Lantern Corps who we see him join. Mm hmm. Yeah, for an opening story, it's really good. Look at this. He's gone. Crota has gone. Yep, the Sorcerer's Rage. And, of course, he thinks Blaze is behind him. But nope, Blaze has nothing to do with it at all. And he comes, comes to the conclusion. Oh, crap, he must be alive. And he is. Don't worry about that. Yep, for the opening story of this book, it's really good. Thoroughly enjoyable. Excuse me. And, of course, then we have... Rackstar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy here. Yeah, there was also a thing in the series to develop an attraction to Belize. Why not? Belize is hot. Yep. And he goes off into space, joins our Lantern Corps. Yep. An absolute really good... Uh, oh, yeah, and also... Guy Gardner shows up. Yes, Guy Gardner. Yeah, it gets a brief fight with him to end up end this particular trade. It's just so fun. 
Oh yeah, at one point Belize overthrows Atrocitus, but uh, actually not Atrocitus, somebody else. Oh yeah, there's also this thing where Belize kidnaps members of the former of the National Corps. Look, another butt shot. Yep. And you think you why do you keep saying, Oh yeah, another butt shot? Because Belize's butt is constantly shown in every book she's in. And we have one alien who tries to kill Atrocis. And then the final issue ends basically with with Jack Moore basically just arriving at the at the site of the apparent death of well Atrostas. For the opening story arc of the issues of this book, it's really good. I give this book roughly a uh, I'm gonna give it roughly a nine out of ten. Okay. So yeah, that's it for Sick Love You. Alright. Two more comic corners and then I'll be on to Eden Zero, okay? Next video. Bye.